Hi, welcome to Midware Friday, episode 74, September 28, 2018. Azure Functions V1 or V2. So that will be the session um, of today. So it's been a while since, uh, you know, you saw the last episode or recording from me. And the last one was a little bit before the summer. Uh, after the summer, now we kicked off again. Um, and in this episode, I'm just going to talk about uh, yeah, Azure Functions. So just a little recap of, of what Azure Function is or what are the concepts are. Um, so it's all about, you know, it's, it's, it's event-driven type of, of programming uh, within Azure. So you can run small pieces of code and you react to events, um, where it could it be time at one, HTTP, or other types of events where you execute code on upon. So your code is kind of triggered on, on top of kind of an event, uh, a message entering a <clears throat> queue, um, or you do some timer trigger uh, based on a cron job, and then you can execute some code that is hosted up in the Azure platform, uh, written either C sharp, F sharp, Node, or even Java. That's uh, that's possible. And based on what your code does, so you can have based on a trigger, there could also be some data associated with it. Um, that as an input, it will process. Um, that data a request and generate some output, which could be sent to storage or Cosmos DB or on the queue. So there's many ways of, of creating outputs. Um, and with that regard, you also hear like um, uh, f running functions that it has to do with some type of service compute. So if we just look a little bit about the evolution of service itself, it's, you know, we went from on-premise servers lift and shift them into virtual machines and then you push them over into containers and orchestrators um, into a platform where more of the servers are being um, abstracted away and the most ultimate one being servers in the end where you every a lot of things are taken care of you like auto scaling um, you only pay what you use um, there's almost no management of any infrastructure involved at all and with that requires, if you look at serverless, um, you know, is function serverless or not? In the end of the day, um, with, when you look at serverless and re with regards to functions, it's all about plans. So if you run an app service plan where you reserve some kind of infrastructure, uh, then you do kind of more of a monthly payment, then you're more talking about more uh, platform as a service type of thing, where if you run your functions on a consumption plan, then you can view it more as a serverless type of solution because then it will take care of the auto scale, uh, billing, etc. So if you look at the function programming model itself, functions, you know, kind of the small unit of work you, you can do. So they're executed uh, through that trigger and they ultimately finish. Uh, either if they fail, then nothing will happen, but based on, you know, the associated data on that trigger, if there is any, um, it will have inputs and outputs and that's done through, through binding. So binding, so this is just a triggered function um, written in, in a different language, a node. Um, JavaScript in this, I'm sorry. And it's based on, you know, an event hub trigger. So based on that, you know, your message are being processed on, based on the fact that they're um, in, ingested into event hubs. And this is another one, uh, another sample of a function. Um, this is based on a blob queue. So when a blob is being created, then the function will say, okay, I'll take that up and I'll output it to some other blob. So basically triggers and, fun and bindings, that's what it's about with regards to functions. So there's a whole a uh, range of bindings and triggers based on whether you're talking about version one or version two with functions, um, what are the triggers are and what you can see the view as in and output. So you can find this at the documents um, uh, online, Azure Functions, um, triggers and bindings. And then there's this notion, okay, you got version one, you got version two. So version two, uh, two is being released. Uh, when you watch this, this episode, it's again, it's done basically uh, this week. Uh, 24th of September, and it's been viewed as a, a huge milestone by Microsoft. It's guaranteeing um, a 99.95% as an SLA, 
and they kind of say, okay, you had this version one and we recommend to um, update it to 2.0 because it's more performance, has a smaller footprint because it's more related to .NET Core, while uh, version one is the um, full .NET framework. Um, it has some little bit more support of more modern languages and the ability to run code from a package file. So if you look just, you know, a little bit about versions one and two, the differences. So on the left hand side, you see version one, um, which is full on the .NET framework uh, with your function code being hosted up um, in an app service. And it could be that it's an app service based on infrastructure reserve. That's the, um, that's the app service plan, or you can have a consumption plan um, based on the bound plan. Um, version two, same, same with, with regards to the hosting uh, consumption or app service plan, but now it's targeted towards .NET Core. So you have .NET Framework, full framework on one side, and then a .NET Core, which is more, um, has a lesser footprint and is more cross-platform on the other side. And the um, function code is being um, separated from um, the host process. So as you can see in version one, it was all in one, the function code and the host, and this is being um, separated in version two. Then you have the languages. So this is kind of the overview, um, version one on one side and version two on the other side, um, full framework on one end. Um, you've got .NET Core on the other side, um, the more recent versions of of Node, um, there's a preview for Java. Java. There's some um, experimental languages in the first version, which are um, not applicable in the second version. So looking at that programming model, all bindings are brought in as extension. If you look at version two, except for the core HTTP and time support. And, you know, looking at the programming model and kind of what they um, claim also in the Announcement on the release of version two, you know, basically you decouple the extension packages, um, allowing bindings to be versioned independently from the core runtime. So you have more control over your application, how it runs and services um, it depends on. So it's kind of separated uh, this model. And the other thing they've added to version two is an extension for Azure Signal R service. So it has now an extension for the service. Um, so you can start by uh, building this type of real-time um, serverless applications. There's also an improvement in deployment. Um, so in general, you could, you know, you build and you test locally. I'll demonstrate that in my demo later on. Um, you commit to a repository. It could be a Git repo in VSDS, VSDS online. You build and you release. And this is more seamlessly with, uh, with two, but also the upgrades Microsoft have done in that area with regards to, to the DevOps, and I'll show you that too. So when you develop, uh, when you start locally, you could say, okay, you know, as soon as you have Visual Studio 217 and uh, the latest um, installments, you also have the access to the templates. So you start up you do your project, then you can choose a language, version one or uh, version two. So I, here you see a sample of version two. You can have a storage emulator um, locally, so that you see that doesn't mean that you need to have an Azure storage account up there. And then you can basically start developing um, your um, function locally and also test it locally. So in this demo, I'm gonna show a couple of things. Um, what I just talked about my more with regards to the version two. So I'm, um, I build a function locally, I will test it locally. Uh, it's being pushed to uh, VSDS. Um, there you have the build and test, uh, which I'll show, and the deployment towards Azure, and then you have your function running up there. To Visual Studio. So here, this is the function I've created. This is the .NET Core um, version, so version two um, function. I can start this function. And then it will set up um, the service and it will run locally. So this is all embedded. There's all kinds of tools available um, for you to, to test this locally. Now it's up and running locally. And now I could say, okay, I'll do, as you can see here, this is the local endpoint. 
I'll put in a wind speed of 12. I'll send it. And it will give me the bow for six back. So basically this function, what it does, based on the wind speed, it will um, convert that to bow four. It's on a unit of measure for the wind speed. So um, based on how strong the wind will be, the higher the bow four. So if it's above um, bow four 12, you're basically facing a hurricane and then it's a, on a, there to use a different type of scale. So this is just uh, running locally. So I can also, or at least I created some uh, unit tests for um, this function as well. There's several of them. And I can, in test, run all tests. Basically do unit testing on my function. Pretty straightforward um, what I'm doing here. So there's a function test helper class here too. Um, enabling me to um, to do the test in the test explorer you can see that I just run successfully all the tests now I can commit the code and then go to VSTS online or DevOps and here I can set up a pipeline to build these um, my function and let me just show the logs. So this is a run, so it takes a bit of time, so I'm not gonna do it here, but uh, here are some of the steps. So this is all out of the box, so if you choose the pipeline, um, you get this all included, including the tests. And as you can see, the tests are all being done. So I, this is just test, it's all incorporated because I have a unit test within my um, Azure Functions, and these tests are being run as well. And as you can see, they passed here too. But it's a pretty neat feature that, you know, this can be done all from that template that is just out of the box that you can create for uh, building this um, version two um, function. So you can also do this for a version one function, but it's pretty pretty cool that if you include unit tests that they're um, straight away um, seamlessly built into the pipeline um, to do so. So once you've done your um, build, you can continuously or you can automate it further on to also create a release pipeline that could be triggered based upon that build. Um, for that you can use the deploy Azure app service um, which also enables you to push out a function app. Um, what's important is the connection type so you have to set up a service connection basically under the hood there's uh, going to be a service principle being created that's necessary to enable the um, pipeline to basically really so it does say field here but in the end I was able to uh, to do a deployment and here you see a successful deployment in the end so basically there's a deployment of the build I have as to deploying this as a um, function into a function app so the function app is already being provisioned. So I've done that before I did the release pipeline, but basically you could set this up or automate this as well, that you first create a function app in your Azure resource group, and then subsequently um, deploy your function or functions in that function app. So here again, this is the deployed um, function. So it will show you um, the binding file. Um, it won't show the code itself, basically because it's, um, it's packaged as a DLL. I can, again, call this, but now this is the other URL, including the, the key. And let's do minus p12 again. And it will give both four six back. I can go over to the monitor tab, give it a little bit of a refresh. Um, these are just opinions. Sometimes it takes up to five minutes before results are being displayed where you do a run. But I can look individual in this monitor tab, but this is more from the functional level, okay. This is similar to what you've seen locally, like okay, and it's executing, and this is the mesh response, and this is what it sends back. Um, I can also hit like, okay, application insights. 
and then I run the analytics and basically show you individually the um, the data and the runs again and you can also do some types of queries here as well if you like then here um, you know you, my function app is tied to a application insight um, here I have some more visualizations um, around that function availability request um, here server request I can click on that if I want and, and then further drill down and have some more view of some of the data that's being uh, or the logs are being um, created around my functions because it's tied to application insights so all that uh, logging data is streamed into that as an instance of application insights okay so I showed you a few things around uh, an, an version two version um, on .NET Core. So I build it locally, including unit test. Um, this means I could test it locally using Postman, but also run those unit tests. Um, then I pushed it. And once I committed the code and tested it, then I pushed it to um, my um, repository. Was able to create the build and release pipelines um, and even do their test of the unit test similar there, but then they're incorporated into the pipeline. Then I could deploy it to Azure. Where I could uh, test it again, but also um, you know tie it up to to application insights, so can also really drill down into um, the performance of the function availability, etc. So why v two? So with version one, full .NET framework, version two .NET Core, um, basically um, it, you know this version two release really fits into the trend where you, you, you have this movement of cross-platform uh, multiple languages and also microservices. So if you look, even look at these small uh, functions, you can see, okay, they're a type of mi microservices or some even coined the term and nano services, but uh, it definitely fits in that trend of, of what you see here. Um, there's a, also, if you look at support in the end, it's like, okay, because microservices recommends, okay, move to version two, but what about version one? So. Functions will continue to be supported. Obviously, a Microsoft will continue to support 1.4 for a while um, because there are a lot of customers using that .NET full framework in the production applications. But you know, going forward, um, migrate to two because there will be more features and improvements going forward on 2.0. Um, the other thing is that you know, they, also if the improved DevOps, um, you get this you know aggregated build and deployment options, really giving you that type of unified experience with all, what, what I also experienced when I built um, this function and used the, the DevOps capability in Azure. There's some best practice in general when you look at a function, so use application inside every time. Um, I've done it here too. Um, small pieces of work, so do little work synchronously as possible, batches. Um, don't forget to uh, about the host JSON file. Um, Use those uh, release management pipeline for DevOps. Um, pretty simple to, to set up. It's kind of all out of the box. So definitely um, recommend uh, doing that going forward. Just build your function locally using Visual Studio. Add some unit tests. Uh, test it locally. Push it out, and then continue to do so. Uh, and that's pretty much straight away forward. So don't build functions in a browser. Uh, you could do build it in a browser, but then again, that's only for proof of concepts or little experiments but if you really want to create production type of functions then I definitely say okay go the way forward I also demoed and explained earlier um, now looking at um, the service 360 blocks of serverless 360 also offers a um, capability or service enabling you to monitor um, your functions and logic apps and, and your basically your integrations in the cloud and um, it's a SaaS solution so uh, everything is out of out of the box straight away uh, visual into a, a nice little browser um, user experience um, instead of you know in Azure you have all kinds of services you can use where you could do really do deep monitoring definitely for, for operational people on that say first tier but first or maybe second tier personnel that you know you don't want to give access to um, your Azure portal environment you can give them for instance a service 360 but they also have a blog where some of us um, have um, written about function itself so if you want to learn more about functions or when you want to use logic apps versus functions you can find some uh, some good blogs out there as well so that's basically what i'm doing the shout out here as well um 
while you watch this video, um, Microsoft Ignite uh, will be kind of over, but um, if you want to look more into, you know, this version two and about functions, there's a few um, sessions that are definitely being recorded on channel nine. So definitely here listed here and definitely uh, encourage you to look at these as well. Um, we're talking about the latest uh, developments uh, around Azure Functions. Then the other thing I like to also shout out here um, is that there will be a really good um, um, event called Azure Lowlands, uh, completely uh, around the past. We'll, we'll also include uh, definitely functions, but also you know things around DevOps, IoT, and artificial intelligence, um, containers, data integration. So definitely something. So if you're in the Netherlands uh, in January twenty fifth, uh, then I definitely encourage you to uh, to go to this uh, this event. So you find it on www.azurelowlands.com. So I like to thank you for watching um, this episode. So we're uh, back in business, me and Kent, um, producing these uh, Mineral Friday episode. So thanks again, Bistock 360 for enabling uh, us and hosting these, um, these episodes. And I will leave you with the uh, music credits. Mm -hmm.